friends, thanks so much for tuning in today. This video is all about products that I just really like the experience of applying. Yes, I do believe this look is gonna end looking good. I like the way these products come together on the skin, but really the mindset with what I picked was products that I just love putting on. I love the application of them. Um, so many people I just think consider makeup a means to an end. You know, you're just going to put it on, you're going to get a finished result, that's what you came for, done. But I truly love applying it and these things are all just in some way, shape, or form bring me some sort of joy putting them on so that's why I chose them. So I went through and picked items that I felt that way about and put them in my little bag. If you hear any thunder outside, it's been storming all morning long so that's my background noise today. And yeah, let's jump in. I chose my primer. Um, this one I've been enjoying for a long time, the Maybelline Perfector 4-in-1. They call this glow makeup. I've been using this a lot lately, and I love the experience of putting this on. I don't know what it is about this little puffy tip, but usually, you know, you crank it a little bit, you get some more product out, and you can see this kind of like skin tone product mixed with highlighter. That's the way I describe the formula. It's like a foundation highlight mix, and I just blend that in all over the skin, and I just find that so satisfying just putting that on, swiping it on. There are smaller products with puffy tips, like the things with squeeze tubes attached, kind of those Charlotte Tilbury liquid style makeup products. I don't love those because I feel like they always get kind of sloppy and messy around the cap, but this one has caused me no issues. I adore the finished result. It's a thin, lightweight kind of uh, primer for me. And yeah, this is kind of one of those things I could see myself using every day if need be. For foundation, this is a much loved one. My Wet n Wild Photo Focus Matte. Um, this is in the soft beige color and I don't know what it is about this little applicator that makes me feel like I'm you know frost in the cake it's like a little spatula or maybe it's just the knowledge that whenever I put this one on I'm gonna be totally satisfied with the look like I know I'm in for a great look today and great staying power too I just love this stuff you guys and I'm taking my elf duo brush um, the same brush I used for the primer and I'm just blending it in all over. Never lets me down. Always like just a satisfying application process. Easy to blend in. See, look at this. This is beautiful. So many things are so pretty on top of that Maybelline four-in-one glow makeup stuff. And this is no exception. You take something with a borderline matte finish. This is kind of like a natural matte. I've never thought of it as a super drying looking heavy matte. But so many products end up looking so radiant and pretty paired with this. I like, I've, I've found countless good combos. I've been getting a lot of enjoyment lately out of this e.l.f. Putty Color Correcting Eye Brightener. Please check out my e.l.f. Putty video. By the way, this is in Fair, right? But check out my e.l.f. Putty video for more details on this product. I really think you need to push in and kind of break the seal of that cream a little bit to get more richness out of it. But this has been great for me and it compared so closely to the Becca, which was very impressive, but you know, a fraction of the price. So I'm just pressing this in. I'm gonna go ahead and just blend that with my finger. I might go over it with the brush as well. But you get some really nice stepped up brightening here, and then I find I can use a little less concealer but they talk about this as being a medium coverage step that kind of is prepping you for under eye concealer. I love what that did for the under eye. And then I love this concealer so much, the NARS Soft Matte. I wear it in creme brulee and I thought, I've not yet tried pairing it with this, um, but I generally just love this concealer. You wanna talk about like a great result. This is totally like full coverage, but doesn't give you that full coverage texture that you might expect but I just enjoy dabbing it on. I like kind of this finger painting that I'm doing with the product. Always thought this had a little bit of a cooling sensation when I put it on too, which you know I'm a sucker for that. But I'm gonna go in with my duo brush now and just kind of stamp in what I've done there. I patched it around sort of a broad area. And that stuff always looks so flawless when you get it blended in and I do think it's a good pair wearing that alongside the brightener from Elf. Concealers coming from a pot, I think sometimes there's this misconception that it's gonna look heavy, or there's gonna be sort of an obvious thickness. Whoa, hello thunder. But 
this just looks so nice. Really good together. My under eye area feels super hydrated. We need the rain, I can tell you that. This is the most extended rain we've had for a while. Pulled out an under eye setting powder that I just immediately always love the look of. It's my Laura Mercier Ultra Blur. This is the talc free powder that they make. The shade is just translucent. You're gonna tap some into the cap. I kind of get an ample amount there. And use my triangle powder puff. And this is honestly, under eye setting has become one of the most satisfying steps of makeup for me. And I think it's been starting to use these little triangle puffs. It made me actually enjoy certain powders that I didn't think I even liked that much before. It gets such an even smooth application, um, really takes advantage of everything that powder has to offer in terms of maybe adding a little coverage. And then, you know, I just kind of dust the excess away. And I enjoy using these powders around my T-zone too to lock in some staying power there. Thinking about trying the one size powder in the light pink shade and also have you seen that he's doing uh, Patrick Starr is doing a pressed powder in a stage white color and I saw the demo on TikTok and I was like oh I might need that too so I just kind of press that in lightly everywhere I mean I don't do a full-on bake very often but I get some of that product on and then I use this brush and I can feel some of it dusting away slash working in a little bit more you know whatever is really clinging in there is kind of getting more worked in end result is such a pretty under eye like i always love that effect and then this is a fun one to add on to a look too um i kind of rediscovered this one over the weekend my laura geller baked balance and brighten uh, i wear this in the shade medium and it's this swirled baked powder foundation this is not her most full coverage option the double take one that is not swirled but it's just like a classic baked powder foundation that one actually has the most coverage and might be my favorite thing but if you're looking at pairing a powder over the top of what you've done this is really nice and I can see it kind of um, helping mattify some areas a little bit but not in a dry cakey way um, if you've used a really lightweight foundation product this can add a little coverage in the skin is looking like a dull skin and it's not because of a big caked on powder deal it's just like I'm going light with it I'm just getting a little bit on my BK Beauty 107 and just pretty much focusing it everywhere that I did not put the Laura Mercier Ultra Blur it's sad as satisfying y'all I just I love this I'm loving the immediate finish that gives the skin really even but yet I'm still not looking ultra dry or anything contour sticks are satisfying when they're a good formula and I pulled out one of the formulas I like best which is my M cosmetics this is in the shade Terra I also like the color called summer and um, they sell deeper options too I like the persona stick there are honestly quite a few that are pretty darn good and pretty easy to work with and if you don't want to spend M cosmetics or persona prices you should consider color pop too because their sticks are very easy to manage um, I'm even gonna go on the nose just a little bit there there's something so fun about just seeing that stick now blend right back into the skin with ease and you've got this beautiful gentle contour these are just so easy to work with if you're thinking, what should I try from M Cosmetics? Really think about the sticks. And also, we're going to pull in one of their serum blushes as well. When makeup is easy, it's fun. You know, when you're not feeling like you're struggling, that ease makes it enjoyable and fun. So I think a lot of the things that I've pulled into this look have been things that I feel a great amount of ease in working with. So this is just my Sephora 56 brush. I dab over it. It blends in so nicely. And I can even go over this little area here. I'm so pleased. Like I feel chiseled, but that was almost too easy. And then I thought about pulling in something that was kind of like sunny that would add just a little bit more of a, a bronzy glow to the skin. And so I pulled out my bronze goddess from Estee Lauder. First off, the pure luxurious feeling you get when you pull out this compact. That's a whole feeling. Um, but this is in the shade 01 Sunrise. It's called Healthy Glow Bronzer from the Bronze Goddess range. And David told me I could apply as much of this as I wanted to and it would always like just look good on the skin. 
And so I'm going over the top and it gives you this sort of blurred, sunny. It's the perfect kind of bronzer to pair with your contour. And I'm taking it a little higher. I'm placing it, I'm letting my brush go right over where there's that peachy core, which almost looks a little blushy. And I'm placing this where I do blush. And it just, oh, I love that look. I can go over where I did the little bit of nose contour. It's lovely. It's absolutely beautiful. This is like a little glowy haze that can go all over the skin, giving you glow, but not looking like a highlighter has just been placed everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Really nice. Next up, I said these were making a comeback as well from M Cosmetics. These are a lot of fun to put on too. Um, and the packaging is just so like cute. This is the type of product that just feels right out in the open, like set out in your makeup collection. These are the Color Drops Serum Blush. Um, yesterday I used my amethyst color and today I'm using rose milk. You just have this little dropper and you can take you know a few little dots or little dabs onto your cheek it doesn't have to look pretty at this point but it will blend in with ease look what you can do uh, this is again a sephora 56 just dabbing like stippling over the top and you get this really pretty just like baby's blush look look and the description of them is a serum blush. I think that's very accurate because they're not the type of thing that's gonna get on your cheeks and lock in and be like a stain. They have a little moisture in them. And I think you can kind of see the finish on top of the skin shows that. This is not a severely tacky moisture level, but it just like works in with the product that's already on your face. And this shade is really gentle, but absolutely gorgeous in my opinion. There are a lot of colorful shades in this range also that I think deeper skin tones would really enjoy but look at that freshness fresh as a daisy could this be any more enjoyable I've got thunder in the distance I'm applying makeup that I absolutely love the process of putting on I'm having my coffee it's a great day this is from buxom this is the white Russian highlighter um, I really like this one if you can get your hands on this still I think this is so pretty it gives kind of like a little pinkiness it doesn't look like much in the pan but it gives this little bit of a pinky shifting brightness. And I think it's so beautiful on the cheeks. I think we're ready for that in this look now. You know, we're ready for some real glow to be applied. So I just kind of swirl it. I'm starting there toward the apple. Who says you can't do that? Why not? Look at that glow from head on. You know, why does glow just have to be something people can take in when you turn to the side? Same with blush too, man. Place it where you want to place it. That's where I like to put it. Is this the only highlighter I like? Or is that the only blush I like? No. Like there are so many. I could have gone on and on with this concept, but I'm just one face and I had to pick some things to use today. A little on the cupid's bow. This is a stunning highlight. They need to make this more like readily available. I know it was part of a limited edition collection, I believe, but I think you can still dig it up in certain places. All right, we're gonna do some setting mist today for the experience of it and for the scent of it. I'm using just classic MAC Fix Plus. There is something beautiful and unique and completely one of a kind about the smell of MAC Fix Plus. Nothing else smells quite like it. Mm. Takes me back to the or my earliest days of like really getting into makeup, watching people use this for, I don't know, probably a couple of years before I made my purchase of it. I've really been into complexion for, you know, months and months now. I've found this stage of the makeup to be super satisfying. And I know I get to this point and I'm like, wow, it looks really good. But this looks really good. These products came together very well. We're ready to move on to brows. What am I gonna use for brows? Oh, I know what it has to be. I have to pull out my Kosas Brow Pop. I wear this in the shade Dark Brown and it's a little teardrop shaped pencil there that kind of creates this mid-size shape. It's not teeny tiny. It offers a little more precision than just a really standard size pencil. But what's amazing about this, say it with me, it's shaped like a square and it feels so good to hold in the hand and so solid. This is where M starts her campaign for more square shaped pencils because I think there are people who have legitimate trouble with their use of brushes and makeup products and being able to grip. There are people with arthritis. There's people with actual issues. Like for me, it's just like, oh, that, that feels more comfortable to hold it that way. But there are some people who could really, really use products like this. 
and it truly does do a great job. Like this is an awesome pencil in its own right, just talking about as far as pencil goes, but it's very enjoyable to put on things that are easy, that don't make you struggle, that let you enjoy the sound of the thunder or the kitty cat who just walked in your room or whatever it may be. There are so many makeup options out there. You can pick ones that make your life more enjoyable as you put them on. I talk about the square shape so much, but that is actually a really perfect shape and size of the pencil itself that's doing the applying a really perfect shape and size. It does the work fairly quickly, but yet it's still precise. I love that. And then you know I'm pulling out Brow Fast Sculpt. I love to sing this product's praises too with its genius little brush with the long bristles on one side and short bristles on the other. Long bristles can pull that brow hair up make it stand at attention, and it really does hold like nobody's business. But the process of putting it on, pleasant, enjoyable. Sometimes I think we forget that every moment is an opportunity to enjoy whatever it is we're doing. You know, like we don't just have to rush through this to get to that. Like this is your present moment. This is the moment you're in right now. Like whatever that task is, what can you do to make that more enjoyable? How can you like level up your thoughts to be a more positive thinker in that moment? You know, whether it's standing there washing dishes, I've heard people say, and I'm trying to like kind of change my mindset on this too. Housework can be viewed as oh, this is such a chore, I don't enjoy this, I just have to get it done, just get it done, blah, blah, blah. But that's also maybe a moment you have to just have a gratitude moment. Think grateful thoughts. Reset your brain a little bit, you know, slow down. Makeup is like that too. It's much deeper than just getting ready for the day. The eyeshadow palette I pulled out is nothing that's gonna give me some kind of wild look. I'm sorry if that's what you were hoping for today, but I have been loving for the last several days. I've just been loving to pop this open. It has a smell and for some reason the smell is really grabbing me. Like this came out a while ago. Would it have been about a year ago maybe? I, you know, found the scent fairly appealing then too. And I know I've talked about liking this palette, the Born This Way Sunset Stripped. The original Born This Way was one where I didn't like it when it first came out and then I have rediscovered that one time after time. But this one, I thought kind of from the get-go, I enjoyed how the mattes went deeper. I like the contrast with it. Some of these shimmers honestly do just apply better with a finger. But what's keeping me actually pulling out the palette? What is that smell? It's such a nice smell and it's so different. Nothing else smells this way. It's kind of making me think like maybe a perfume that has a little bit of a fresh air vibe. I'm sorry if scents really bother you and you're like that, that would not appeal to me at all. But for me, I just, I love the way this palette smells. Let me know if you like it too. <laughs> so good. And I've also seen this recommended um, for that latte eye look that people are going for these days, which is basically just, you know, think of the light color of a latte. Milk and coffee kind of combination. I'm taking this nude beach color and I'm just getting that matte in my crease right now. I have Milani eyeshadow primer underneath. By the way, yes, I was thinking about that too in my last video where I was using the shadow stick and so many said like, you know, maybe try it without the eyeshadow primer underneath. And I was thinking that too as I was editing. I thought, you know, that probably altered the texture of my eyelids somewhat. Although, it does cause me to think how many people are able to go in with a complete absence of any kind of texture on their eyelid. Like a lot of people put foundation and concealer over their eyelids and that's giving something that's gonna sort of, what should we say, slow the shadow stick down a bit or give it something that gives it some resistance for blending. So I don't know, maybe we need to make sure the eyelid no matter what, like even if you don't intentionally put an eye primer on, you could have some moisture or some tackiness there. So maybe we need to go over that with some setting powders. I, I don't know, something to make the texture that of, you know, the top of a bare hand where it does blend so well. But even so, you still have that little obstacle of a crease to work with which can be a little bit tricky. Okay, I'm just kind of blending that out until it feels like there's nothing more to blend. And I'm gonna take High Tide right here. What is the smell of this? It's just so darn pleasant to me. It's really like appealing to me now more than ever. I don't know why. 
It's drawing me in. So High Tide is a really nice blended out shade. It's not a very blatant highlight, but it just smooths your edges beautifully. I love the way it does that. I want to deepen my crease a little bit more. I think I'm going to take Chai Times right here, this kind of burgundy, or maybe you'd call it like a really deep dusty rose. I'm going to work some of that into my crease with my crease brush. This is the crease brush I like to use from Profusion. Oh, See, enjoyable. Love building up mattes, working with mattes. All here for a classic brown eye as well. Undeniably nice and smooth. So good. And then pull out a flat brush. Let's get some darkness going. This palette can go dark and the coolness of this black sand color. It's like a near black and it is pigmented and it's like it really provides a lot of pretty contrast if you want to use that with the other shades. I'm going to use Cocoa Glow, which is our dark brown matte, with my Morphe flat brush. I'm just feeling the browns today. Look at that. Ooh, so nice. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Too Faced knows mattes. They know what they're doing with a nice smooth matte that's easy to work with on the eyes. Working with the same shade, just a little bit of it with my Profusion Small Pointed Brush now, and we shape. Do you want it to kind of make an outer V? Do you want it to just sort of blend up from the eye and give yourself a little lift? That's what I'm doing, just a little lift with a tiny bit of additional product. And then I love the Golden Hour shade. This one right here, this peachy, peachy pink, pretty on the outer edge of the look. And all matte look is really pretty with this palette, or you can take one of the glowy shimmers. Again, not a brand new palette, just happen to be really loving it right now. Where's my little elf guy? My new elfy friend. I take a little Golden Hour with the Elf Precise Blending Brush. I'm gonna let it come right up over this zone. So this is a little smaller than my crease brush. And I'm taking that pretty pinky peach and letting it just rise right up from the look. It's so beautiful. Which do you like better? Do you like this, the Sunset Strip palette, or do you like the um, original Born This Way Natural Nudes? I really like the outcomes I get with both palettes. Um, but I think this one probably has a little bit more pleasing darkness in there. Okay, I'm gonna start putting on some shimmer. I'm gonna take a little bit of Bonfire Babes right here. A little bit of that shimmery brown. And we're just gonna take that over like the center part of the lid and let it overlap our matte brown. So shimmer brown kind of meets matte brown center of the lid. Really pretty sheen. And that one is applying well with my brush. See where we got that? Still got a little space on the inside where I want to try a little bit of Shall We Dance right here. This actually looks like it has a bit of a pinky shift. Oh, that's kind of fun. A little bit unexpected. I'm not sure if you can see the pinkiness in it. It can be built. Oh, what a pretty look. Love that. Got a little smidgen of fallout there. I want a little soft haze on the lower lash line. I'm going to take a little bit of Sun Chaser right here, medium brown. And just use that as this super soft under eye definition. There we go. Moving on to some eyeliner. I am going to do like a little bit of a half lash on this look and I again think that some of the most satisfying steps end up being your easiest steps. So I'm using a liner pen here that is always black, rich, and intense and will last. And it's my Sephora Colorful Wink It Felt Tip Liner. And looking up close at my eye, I can really see that pinky shift of the inner shadow. That's so neat. So I'm not doing a wing, I'm just kind of following my natural lash line with that. Then we gotta admit that probably the most satisfying mascara of the moment right now for me is my CoverGirl Exhibitionist Stretch and Strengthen. Builds so quickly, 
gives me superhero effect without superhero price tag. I've been very into this lately. Bought one for mom. We're set on this over here. Got a backup for myself as well. It's still thundering outside, by the way. It's for my instant gratification fans. Now, could you do an eye look that took just a ton of elbow grease and like, wow, this made me slave, but I'm very satisfied now that I'm done. I can see that, you know, I can see that feeling. I've done that before. Really took some time. There was a lot of efforting involved and then you were pleased with the result. Yes, but there's something about ease in application that makes the actual process, the actual time spent putting it on, I think very enjoyable. So that's why I picked a lot of things that bring me a feeling of ease. Does anybody know about diamond art? Um, my sister, you know, she does amazing watercolors and some of them were created as like diamond art posters, like pictures you can recreate and it's taking these little gems and you place them just so on the surface and they adhere and you can just enjoy that very detail oriented process of putting them on. They tell you exactly where to put them. Diamond Art Club is where I got hers from and it's been sitting up here in a box because I've been kind of intimidated to do it because I know it's going to be big and I felt just very unfamiliar with the process. And so then I came upon some little diamond art coasters. I saw somebody talking about these on TikTok. TikTok, and they were talking about how fun that was and I thought there we go that is how I will like dip my toe into this process before I start an entire like paintings worth of this. So I got a little pack of coasters. It's 15 bucks for the whole thing. I do recommend having some kind of like container where you can divide up your little diamonds. See I'm learning. This is when I want to do the learning for the little coaster project. So we got a little container for the gems. Belle's doing it too. She's very into it. And we got these cute little butterfly coasters and you can do one in like like a couple of hours. So I took nap time yesterday and I was like, that's it. I'm not hustling around the house. I'm not cleaning toilets right now. I'm going to make this darn coaster. And it turned out so pretty. And then she started on one as well. But I'm really glad I'm trying the coasters before I move on to the bigger project because it's there's stuff to know. There's tips and tricks. But it does turn out to be highly satisfying. <laughs> I'm going to pop on a little half lash, you guys, because I think half lashes can be very satisfying with the result, but very easy to put on. And these are just my little Ardell half lashes, okay? These aren't even the more dramatic Amazon style. That's a very cat-eyed look. And this is just kind of a little outer lash thickness and I think I forgot how beneficial this can be for the look but how sneaky it can also be. You want to take a minute to get that dry and also attempt to make that lash band a little more curved by sort of wiggling it and then you're going to place it. Uh, for me it seems to work if I go near the end of my eye not the actual corner of my eye but close to it and then just make sure every part of that short strip gets laid down on your eyeliner. And then you get that nice little bit of thickness at the end. It already looks a little bit cat-eyed because of that. If I went all the way to my outer corner, it would give me even more of a cat-eyed look and I think a little less natural look perhaps. And also you got to think possibly a droop. We want lift, not droop. I think this has got to be one of the easiest ways to experience false lashes is doing the half lash. So if you thought, oh, that's just not for me. I don't want to put in the effort of false lashes get you just a little half lash. These are from Ardell and they say 315 and they really add a little something extra with the least amount of effort and they do hang on there all day. And I am going to do a little Cali Ray on the lower lash line too. I've just got that really soft um, eyeshadow shade down there. I want a little bit of mascara. And you let that glue get a little bit tacky. I'm not taking it all the way to my outer corner, but I'm getting it kind of close. Lay down both ends right on that eyeliner you put on. Boom. Added thickness at the outer part of the eye and more lift. And once those have a moment to dry on the eye a bit more, I would apply a little more mascara at this stage of the game. I can tell I'm going to want a little more blush, you know, just seeing where we're at right now, seeing the depth on the eyes. I'm going to take a little bit more of Rose Milk from our Color Drops blush. And you could also easily build up with just a little bit of a powder blush too. That would work fine. I just really like this shade. I want to stick with it and just tap it in. Take a small dense brush and tap it right into the cheeks. 
you really don't run the risk of this setting in place too fast, which is great. And then a step that I love taking around this time is getting some closest cloud set or the nearest dupe to this is Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless in the shade Porcelain if you're trying to dupe Airy, which is the lightest shade of Kosas Cloud Set. A little bit right between under eye and blush and on T-zone. Then for lips, um, this is going to be kind of a, like a neutral combo here. I'm going to take uh, one of my newer Revlon Super Lustrous Lipsticks. Actually, it's been around a long time. This is the shade Coffee Bean. When I tried this on on a TikTok or a short or whatever, um, several people were like, wow, I didn't know they still made that. It has a little pearl finish. And you know, just that 90s kind of brownish look. But I'm going to add in there some hard candy. This is Kiss and Tell from the Instapout line. And this is sort of a toasty cinnamon colored liner. And this is going to give me my precision. You could put this on first, but there's something I like about going over it like this. Really pulling it in from the outside. So I'm applying most of my product there in that outer corner. And then here's what's so satisfying. You have this brush on the other end and you can really blend the two tones together. It's a toasty summer lip. I mean, really it's a fall lip, but we're bringing it into summer. I like it. Those two tones just blend so nicely together. I love that. So friends, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed the look. I had a lot of fun doing this. I clearly chose products that I really just enjoy putting on. So it's been a very positive experience today. Thank you for your time. And please let us all know in the comments section, what are those products where you just get a good feeling as you put them on? You feel like it's satisfying. It makes you enjoy the process as opposed to just thinking about um, when is this going to be done so I can get on with my day. Let's chat about that down below and I will see you again very soon. I love you. Bye.